Remember when someone rejected you? Can you remember where you were and what you were doing? I think many of you have probably had experiences that came to mind when I asked that question. I'm guessing that at the time you wanted to get out of that place and away from those people as fast as you could. That kind of reaction would be understandable. It's a way that we recover from rejection. We heal by putting distance between us and those people in that place. That's normal. Wanting to run is normal. Avoiding that place is normal. Avoiding those people is normal. But wouldn't you know it, there's an abnormal response to disagreement and rejection in the New Testament in the book of Acts chapter five. I'd like to dig into the response and see if we can wrap our heads around why the disciples responded opposite of normal. Peter and John and the other disciples were in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit empowered them. Their mission from Jesus saturated their souls. Be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. They were empowered to tell the good news about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that has power to restore us to the Father. They decided his life was in them, so their lives were for him. Luke, the author of Acts, records that at the time, many signs and wonders were taking place through the apostles. Word got around fast. People started bringing their sick out into the streets and on cots and mats, hoping that Peter's shadow might fall on them as he walked by. And it did, and people got healed. News of the healing spread beyond Jerusalem to the surrounding towns. From all over, people brought their sick to be healed and their demon possessed to be delivered. The streets of Jerusalem had to have been chaotic. Luke wrote that everyone got healed. And better yet, multitudes, both men and women, were daily added to the number of believers. The high priests and a bunch of the Sadducees got really jealous. They thought they had demolished this Jesus revolution when they executed Jesus. They couldn't handle that people were listening to Peter and John and not to them. So they thought they'd solve the problem by arresting Peter and John and putting them in prison. But prison doors are no match for God. An angel came during the night and let the two out of their cell. The angel gave Peter and John instructions. He said, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. So let's pause in the story. Remember that question I asked at the beginning? Can you remember um, where you were and what you were doing when someone rejected you? Peter and John were at the temple speaking words of life. And that's exactly where and what the angel told them to do again. Go back to the place where you're in danger and speak the same message of Jesus. Here's the crazy part. They did it without hesitation. They could have run for their lives, but they didn't. They walked right back into the place in front of everyone and started preaching because they knew, they knew his life was in them. So their lives were for him. They felt his life and love course through their souls. The joy of telling Jesus story far outweighed the pain of rejection. Their devotion and obedience resulted in more people believing and giving their lives to him. It also resulted in being captured again by the religious leaders and being beaten this time. Yet Luke tells us after Peter and John were beaten, they left rejoicing they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Christ is Jesus. His life was in them, so their lives were for him. I know that many of you are in painful situations of rejection right now, and my heart feels for you, but take courage. If Jesus lives in you, you can walk in his authority and speak out boldly, no matter what your accusers say. You are worthy to tell the world the story of Christ's love in you. His life is in you, so your life is for him. Jesus will never reject you. And being confident of that, I wanna ask you, who is God telling you? Who is God prompting you, inviting you to tell the message about Jesus and what he's done for you? I'd like you to tell us that. If you think of, of someone, 
um, just list off the situation in the comments and we want to pray for you. We want to be behind you, um, spreading God's power within you, encouraging you. We will be praying for you. So um, I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray that you would empower us, um, help us to walk in the authority that you have given us to fulfill the commission that you have given us to tell others about you, to invite them into your presence and into your love. In Jesus' name, amen.